I'm Suzanne McNeil with Design Originals and today I have several Zentangle friends who are going to show you demos of 10 different items with Zentangle. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Angie Van Gallis from Dallas and I'm going to show you a Zentangle drawing technique called Tiny Tangles. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a vinyl eraser that I've cut in half into a square. And I'm going to take my Tombow marker and fill in some color like I would a rubber stamp. Fill it all up. And then I'm going to stamp, stamp, stamp. Put this down, and I like to use a size 01 micron pen, and I like to I like to use my favorite tangles, and one is Flux, one of the uh, original official Zentangle patterns. You can do any pattern you like, and this gives a nice. essence of color. I'm actually using an official Zentangle tile. And now I'm doing the pattern called Bales. Just fill in that whole area. to just give you an idea of how you can fill in your tiny tangle. I can show you. Here's another one that I had done with using different colors of markers. Here's one that I did using the variation of steps and the weakness versus the heaviness of the marker. This is what I'm planning on using. And here's still another one. And there's another one that I've done with Enzeppel. So I hope this inspires you to do a little bit with Tiny Tangles. Hi, I'm Janice Freiheit from Dallas, Texas, and I'm going to show you today how to combine your love of Zentangle with stamping. Um, this is a stamp that or this is a tangle that I have done about that I've called fall and we're gonna I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to do the color and then we'll talk about this entangle you want to start with your lightest color whenever you're uh, stamping because if you just try to put it on the dark side afterwards it's going to bleed a lot so start with your lightest color and I'm really fond of yellow so I'm always using this color and then uh, I've gone into my next lightest colors which would be this olive and this tea dye down here and then I've added red and I'm going to show you how to add that red. I know a lot of people have trouble with stamping to um, keep streaks from showing up and that happens to me from time to time too but the thing I've learned to do is you want to start off the edge which is why I have paper here start off the edge to get rid of those marks and then bring it onto the paper and rub it in and you have to rub pretty hard and then it will go on in and blend. Okay, and you can keep doing that until you get it as dark as you want. See, now that time I didn't wait and you see I got a little square. But if you keep blending, you can make it kind of go away so you don't have to throw your tag away and start over. Okay, then once you have all your color, you want to stamp your image. I've got this gorgeous image. I'm a really heavy stamper, so <laughs> I always find if you don't stamp enough, it's not going to come out. So you got to keep adding some black ink. All right, and then we'll press this down here and just press it pretty hard and hope for the best. 
Okay, it's a little lighter than my final product, but you know, whatever. Okay, so moving on. Uh, then the next thing I did was go ahead and start zentangling, or start putting my, my zentangles on. Um, we've got a, a start of mirror here, and I left a little blank just to show you how that finishes out. Okay, you're just gonna continue on this one drawing lines parallel. I'm a lefty, so if that doesn't work for you, be sure you use your right hand. And that finishes out, and then you would put some shading down the middle to help the design. And then also around, the, I've got just a little checkerboard, which is called Knight's Bridge on either side. And then finish up with these tiny circles that are really so fun to use everywhere, and these are called tipple. Okay, then on this side, I worked in a new pattern that's from Suzanne McNeil. It's gonna be in her Zentangle 9 or 10 book, I believe. And uh, I've done two of those leaves. I'm gonna finish up doing one for you. Um, they've got different patterns than th these two. So, on this side, we're gonna put some little shapes little half moons and fill them in. And then just echo around those shapes a couple of times. And you just leave it like that. The center line, I'm gonna decorate it a little bit with a little slant of stripes. And then this side, to me this looks like a little paisley. You just kind of come down fill it in a little bit so it has that little paisley shape. It's sort of a fat nine, okay? And that takes care of that. Uh, what I did on my tag was then add two more leaves to that that I did on a separate sheet of paper and then um, pop dot them on. Pop dots are sticky on both sides so you just pick the area you want it in. And honestly, the reason I put these like this was because I had messed up on my, on my Zentangle a little bit and I needed something to cover it and I thought, well, this would be good. I'll just add these little leaves on and I liked the result. The final result of my original is here. Okay. And that is my tag. I'll have always love to outline everything in black because it just makes it show up so beautifully. So. Hi, I'm Kip Koslowski. I'm a CZT from Lansing, Michigan. I want to show you how to make your own washi tape. This is paper tape that you get in the first aid aisle at your pharmacy or in the pharmacy section of any store. And this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to make it on laying strips out on a waxy kind of paper, so sandwich paper on the waxy side, waxed paper, um, Butcher paper, any of that sort of thing will work, but you want it to be something that will release the paper, the tape when you're done. You simply tangle, I'm tangling, or stamp, or design on the tape. Here I've done some henna drum, fractal trees, shattuck. I'm using an O2 because it shows up a little bit more, but any pen will work. And you're just going to do your design right on the paper right on the tape, and any of your designs will work very nicely, of course. You can use the color. Here I've done something with a Derwent Ink Tense pencil and put it in. So you can do pretty much anything on this that you want to. Once you've got your design done, you can peel off the tape, and you can use it on plain paper. You can use it on color paper, and as you see, the color will show through nicely. And if I stick this down, the color shows up quite nicely through it. If you wanted to use it in a journal, I'm just going to tear this so it will fit. Lay it along the edge of your page. I suggest you don't leave your blue on. Stick it down, and you have your own washi tape. Hi, I'm Kathy Redmond. I'm a CCT from Prairieville, Louisiana. And what I'm going to show you today is a different way to use your Secura Jelly Roll pens. 
the first tile I'm going to work with is a black pen and what you need is a water brush so you need a water brush you need the Sakura colored pens, the colored jelly rolls and I really like the metallics because I just like that shimmer that happens when you use it and you need a little something that's shiny this is just a little blending palette from Tombow but you can also use just a plain old white tile or even a dinner plate so I did to start with so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to scribble onto your palette a little puddle of ink and you can see I've got a nice puddle of ink going right there and then what you're going to do is take your water pen and just lightly dip it in there and you're going to go to your tile and you can see how it very lightly colors and shades and this is really a nice technique to use if you've colored or, or drawn with your pen you can use this to shade behind it there's always questions about how to shade when you use a colored pen and you can see here how nicely this metallic shows up on the black and you can do that over and over and over again so here you see one that I've done before and this is just drawing with the pen but I could have actually taken that and shaded with the pen. I'm also going to show you how to do it on white so you see here a sample of one that's been done that way and I'm going to do maybe a little bit of this awful orange. <laughs> Most of the times you don't think you want to draw with that fluorescent color but when you use this technique it really does make a really pretty effect when you use it and I'm just going to wipe my brush so you get a little bit of it and you can see here where the water softens it and makes it much nicer on the tile than if I would have drawn with that color and the more water you use the paler it's going to be so if you squeeze your brush just a tiny bit more water will come out and you'll get more of a puddle and you can see how much paler that can be as you spread it out. So you can get a very nice variegated effect and that's what happened here when I used the pink and the turquoise. I blended them together so I worked from here in and from the center out to get that effect. You can see here where I've done a combination of the two. I drew with the pen and then I also shaded with the jelly roll pen and my water brush. And these are just samples of watercolor and they have a combination of pen and watercolor along with a little bit of colored pencil on some of these. Hi, my name is Diane Ferrer. I am from Brooklyn, New York. Today I'm going to show you how to do a Zendala using an ordinary piece of paper. This is a six inch square piece of paper that I have folded several times to crease. I folded it across this way to make a triangle, opened it up, folded it again, opened it up, and folded it two more times to create eight equal pieces within the square. I'll, these creases will assist me in creating the lines for my Zendala. I then take my tile, it could be a white tile or a black tile, and I place it around about within the center of the paper. I then use my ruler and seeing my crease marks, I line up my ruler with the crease marks and with my pencil, I'll draw a light line across connecting each corner. I then turn my ruler the other way, lining up my crease marks on the other side to create an X on the paper. I'll do that one more time, up and down and then left to right with my marks. Once I have my marks on my paper, I don't need this white sheet of paper anymore. I have all of my lines to assist me in creating my Zendala. Once my lines are on the paper, I then start to draw my different tangles following within my lines. To create my Zendala, I, I'll continue to turn it while putting in additional tangles to create 
the piece. I'll continue adding the same design over and over again. Keep on turning your Zendala to make it easier for you to draw your design. Once your Zendala is done or that you like what you see, you can then go back and shade different parts of it using the new Zenstone. and that is lightly rubbing it against the surface and then taking a stump to blend it in. This is a completed tile that I have done and I'm going to add some more of the Zen Stone to the areas that I want to shade. It gives it a light halo or effect to the areas that I want to color in. Okay, and when you're happy with what you see, this is the completed Zendala, and I have done some other pieces that involved color with other different tangles. Um, this is one of my pictures and I have reduced it to make a magnet of the same image of this piece. I also have polymer clay pieces, jewelry, made from canes that were rolled as well. Hi, my name is Jody Halperty and I'm a certified Zen Tangle teacher from Casper, Wyoming. And I'm just going to show you some basic how to get yourself started from scratch if you have uh, just a sketchbook or a piece of paper. And this is something fun I do with a lot of my students is that I have them pick up different coasters from different restaurants, all different shapes and sizes. And what you can do is just put it in your book, trace around it with your pencil because we always do our strings in pencil because strings are just a suggestion, a way to get ourselves going. And then you can use the different shapes to help do your string. If you're kind of overwhelmed by all the choices, I just do it like this and then I overlap it in different spots and make it real random. I cross it over other ones. And if I really get wild and crazy, I, I kind of go outside the box, so to speak. And then when I get done, and I'm happy that I have enough sections, what I'll do next is I'll switch to my micron and I'll pick my tangles and I'll just fill in those sections. So that's how you can use a basic coaster that you get from any restaurant. They're going to throw them away anyway. They also make great souvenirs. If so, grab your souvenirs and carry them around in your sketchbook. And you can get started with a basic string. So an example of one that I'm working on now is how, this is how I use the edge to make my string sections. And then I curved it like this. And so it kind of almost looks like a cat's eye. And then I have another one right here that I made different sections and filled those in. So you can, and I added some words to this one. You can put words in your um, uh, Zentangled inspired projects. And so that's just an example of a, some of completed ones. Hi, I'm Karen Millard from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina and I'm going to be showing you a new pattern that I developed. It's called Vendi, and in a minute I'll explain why I called it Vendi. So the pattern starts with a circle, and then I just aura the circle around the outside. 
so that it's it's really a double circle and then I'm going to do another circle that's going to interlock with this one so I just start the circle and in halibut fashion I go underneath and come out here and I don't worry about whether these really are circles or ovals or whatever other shape resembles a circle and then I'll go around that one with another circle and then I'll do another one the same way and again go underneath and I like to vary the size of the circles so they're not going to all be the same size I think that makes it a lot more interesting and then I can do one that's going to intersect with more than one of those circles so I'm going to start it over here and it's going to go through both of those circles and then draw the aura around it now the reason that I named this Vendi is because as a retired school teacher I used to teach Venn diagrams and Venn diagram is when you compare two things and you use two circles that interlock to show what's the same and what's different between them and that's what this reminds me of with the circles interlocking with each other so you can wind these circles around however you want you can cluster them together um, I've also tried this with uh, squares and rectangles and triangles um, over here I have an example where I clustered the circles together in the center as sort of the focal point and then did a border and some background behind it. On this one I did the circles and they wound across the tile and I um, filled and on this one I filled in the pieces of the circles that did not um, interlock with another one. On this one I blackened in the parts of the circles that were common to more than one and then I do stripes in the other sections. You can just leave them opened also. And on this one, I did it with the squares and rectangles and I used it as a border around um, the outside of my tile. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it, a lot of different ways you can do the background, uh, blackening it, stripes, just leaving it open however you want. Hi, my name is Sampada Agarwal. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina and I'm a CZT. Normally we do zentangles with pen and paper, but today I'm going to show you how to do a tangle on cloth. And not just any cloth, um, this is a pre-made hot pad that I'm using to do my tangles on. So um, you can imagine this surface to be like our zentangled tile, so you can either start with just a string um, surrounding it and then make any um, design that you want or you can go ahead and create a stencil or some design or an initial or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the pen that I'm using. This is a Pentel gel roller for fabric. This is a real great product. Um, it has a very nice black color. You can um, draw with this and if you heat set it really becomes even washable I'm told. Um, so to, to begin with let me just show you um, we can just go ahead and create one basic motif and what I'm showing you is um, let's say a cupcake since I am going to do the design on a hot pad which is going to be used in the kitchen so we can just go ahead and use a motif like so and um, and then you can make a border around it or however you want to do it but this is what I have the sample ready for you I started off with some basic tangles so just like you do it on paper you just go ahead and make the tangles you decide what design you want to do and then go ahead and do so and once you have the design down, you can even shade it. You can use gray or you can even put colors on it because there are a number of 
fabric markers available in different colors. So we can just simply go ahead and alternate the design like so. And the pen is really very, very forgiving. It has a roller ball. So, and because this hot pad has got a little bit of cushion, it's really a joy working on this. And as you can see, it really doesn't take much time or effort to personalize <coughs> any such item. And I per se feel that when art is part of your everyday life, it's just such a joy. So I will stop here at this point. Maybe I will just show a little bit of the shading that I plan on doing. And for that, I am using a different product. This is a fabric color Zig pen. It's gray in color. It has got two tips. There is a calligraphy tip and a brush tip. I'm just going to use a brush tip and then just gently shade this area. It, you really don't have to press too hard because otherwise it becomes really dark. And that just gives a little bit of dimension to your tangles. And now that I have the basics down, I will show you a finished hot pad. And this time I have used another motif. This is again a kitchen themed one, so I've just used an apron. And um, one more is actually done in reverse where I have kept the pairs without any tangles and tangled the rest of the area. Similarly, um, you can also do your tangles on a kitchen towel because that's again another item that is regularly used in the kitchen. So you can personalize it, you can initial it, or you can even go ahead and do a similar design. If you, if you like some design, all you have to do is just lay it on top of it because the towel is so thin, you can literally trace that design out without worrying about um, um, having to do any special prep for it. So there you go. Um, these are my ideas for um, different sorts of zentangles that can be used in your everyday life. I hope you try these out and um, reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Hathaway. Um, I'm from the Wichita, Kansas area. And um, I'm going to demonstrate um, a tangled garden. There are a lot of folks, a lot of CCTs out there doing tangled gardens. And um, so I'm, by, I'm not an expert, but um, it's a really pretty simple concept. We have just taken the tangles that lend themselves to uh, organic um, things in nature plants, um, water, that kind of thing, and we're creating gardens, and it's really a lot of fun. The paper that we're using is the Toned Tan from Strathmore. You can get this in a couple of different sizes, and it lends itself to a real attractive um, tangling that we can highlight with white, the white charcoal pencil, and um, it's a lot of fun. It has a real interesting effect. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, if you use in Zeppel, it will look like a garden path. Now, what I've done is I've made my string with pencil. So those of you who are Zentangle purists are gonna wanna look away <laughs> because I have done the string with pencil and I'm going to erase it when it's finished. And then we get this effect right here with no lines between the stones. So um, I've already started this path to save time. But if you already know in Zeppel, we're just cutting off the corners, making stones. So I'm not going to finish that because you get the idea. When I finish filling, and I have, um, I have caused my path to disappear into the horizon, so my grid got smaller and smaller as I went toward the top, as you can see, and my stones are getting smaller and smaller. 
You don't have to do that. You can make your path any way you want. It is still Zentangle and there are no rules. Okay, we're going to take him on off the page up there. And then I will erase my... They're already very faint, but I'm going to erase these grid lines. Okay, and you can see that um, I made a real interesting stone path. Now, I shade in Zeppel with the backward C. I just choose one side and I shade all the stones the same. The backward C. I go ahead and use graphite. I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to give you the general idea and effect. I forgot my stub. Now this is the fun part with your charcoal pencil. You're going to love this effect. I'm going to go back and I'm going to shade the opposite end with the white charcoal. It really pops on this tan paper. Okay. You can see the effect, the finished effect here. Okay, another organic tangle that I have begun on this page that works beautifully for clouds is Prontom. I've already started one right here. Prontom as a cloud has the most interesting effect when you layer them. I'm going to make him go around behind there. Put a little bitty one. You can make that cloud go anywhere you want. Make him long, short, fat, however you want. Now to shade those, we do it just the way we do with traditional Prontom on the white tile, all those that have gone behind we're going to shade right where they go behind. What's really fun with your pencil, where we've left the little sparkle, fill it in with your charcoal pencil. It makes a very interesting cloud. There's one off in the distance. Okay, another of the organic tangles that's fun to use in your tangled garden is vertigo. Um, I have vertigo that I've almost completed. We'll just finish him up here at the edge of this page. And there is Vertigo. Um, Catkin, which looks just like Pussy Willows to me, is perfect for the Tangled Garden. I've already started this one. Lovely little Pussy Willow. Um, another one that I like to do in the Tangled Garden is mist. Um, coming out of my Prontom cloud. You can draw as much rain or as little as you want to. I'm going to stop here just to give you the idea. I didn't bring all my sizes. What I like to do is use my large microns for the first few dots. 
in decreasing size. Like this example right here. I have that mist going all the way down to the ground. Another organic tangle that is lovely in your garden is flux. Sometimes drawing a double line gives that a little added dimension. And here is an example of flux, and an interesting way to go ahead and shade that is just the top of each leaf with your white charcoal pencil. Really makes that flux pop on that tan paper. Um, another thing that's fun to put in your tangled garden is a mushroom. Um, this is allowed because it's a tangled garden and it's already pretty representational. So I'm just going to show you an easy way to make a mushroom. Just an arc and another arc. Like so. You can decorate him up any way you want. Put dots on him. And it's kind of fun to draw a ladybug. And we need dots on her as well. And I color her red. Get just a little pop of red in there. Adds real interest. It's fun to tangle those mushrooms using various entangle patterns as well. Um, I've used poke leaf up here in the corner. I love to make poke leaf vine all around. And again, if you just highlight with your white charcoal pencil just a few of those leaves, it really pops. So um, these are some examples of tangled gardens. And um, this is really, this willow tree is really just a glorified bead lines. Um, we just made some drooping lines coming off these branches and some have little beads and we put leaves at the end. Um, but it has a real interesting effect. The water is kind of a combination, tangulation between verve and sandstorm. I used it again here in this tree. And those are just some examples of um, tangled gardens. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bonnie Pewdabaugh and I'm from Wichita, Kansas and I'm sharing Katazome today. That's K-A-T-A-Z-O-M-E. And Katazome is the ancient art of stencil dyeing on fabric. And I took a class in Massachusetts uh, last year to learn this art so that I could translate it into Zentangle. And basically what it is, is cutting the stencils, making a paste resist, that's a natural paste resist that you cook. It's made with rice bran and some other ingredients and you cook it. You cut your stencil, which is made from, uh, the paper is made from mulberry leaves and persimmon juice. It's a beautiful paper to work with. You cut your stencil and then you back it with a silk screen <coughs> fabric. You have your white scarves, your silk scarves. You lay your stencil pattern down on the scarves and screen through the paste. You let the paste dry and then you dye your scarf and once that's dry you rinse out the paste and you end up with a beautiful pattern. 
This is Bunzo. This is High Seas. And this one, I forget the name of this one, but there's another pattern. Hi, I'm Dawn, and I'm from Katy, Texas. And today I'm going to show some dimensional things that you can do with your tangles. So if you're like me and you've ever had a Zentangle tile that you didn't like, they're not a complete waste. All you do is get a square hole punch and punch them into little squares. And the way that I like to use them is to create a pop-up. So it doesn't matter what size your cardstock is, you do want to use cardstock, nothing too heavy like the watercolor paper that tiles are made out of, but something heavier than regular paper. And then you fold it in half. So you take your scissors and you make a little bit of a tab with two cuts right there. Then you bend the tab back. Make it flat again and then you open up your card and then using your finger just press that little tab up like that. So fold it again and then either glue stick or tape runner. I think tape runner is a little bit easier. You don't want to put it on your on your square. You want to put it where it's going to go so that you don't over glue it. So you just put a little bit of tape runner right there. And then put your tile in and press it down like that. So right here you have this little thing that doesn't look, really look very good. So what you can do is put it inside a journal. So. So the easiest way to put it inside is just to run some tape runner on one side, put it in the spine, the crease, and then a little bit more tape runner. And then you close the book. When you open it up, it pops up like that. Okay, so that's that one. And then this one is one that you can use with your big regular tiles. So what I've done is this was a square piece of 4x6 paper and I cut it at a diagonal angle right here to cut that off. And then on the folded side, after you fold it, you're going to cut a little edge off like this. It doesn't need to be that much yet. Okay. So then after you've cut the edge off, you want to put your flaps, fold your flaps up like this. And then you just pick it up like this and you're going to have something like that that looks like a V. So it's going to go in like this. So, so what you do is take your glue stick, put a good amount of glue on there and you see how I'm kind of sticking it in the corner right there that's what you want to do to get it where the crease is and then you close your book and that puts it where it needs to be <laughs> and then you do the other side And there you go. And so to put your tiles on there, this time you can put your glue stick all over the back of your tile. Make sure you put it right side up if you've signed it. And the glue is going to take a second to dry, um, but when you open it up, it'll pop open like that. 
You know, Zentangle is such a wonderful art form there. You can use it in quilting. Children in all ages can do Zentangle. You can do alphabets, Zentalas. And the beauty of Zentangle is like a gallery book of Zentangle art from around the world. 137 different artists contributed to this book. It's so inspiring. So enjoy Zentangle.